Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I'm going to get into one of my frequently asked questions videos. We're going to go through the comments and see what you guys have to ask about and what you have to say. Um, I'm happy to review the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, you know, leave your comments, leave your in-game name. And when I find a question that really has some meat on the bones that, you know, offers some value to the community and lets us dive deep into a topic, I like to send out some rewards to the people that are that are leaving those comments. Um, okay. Without further ado, my name is Dwayne Cunningham and I go by Infidel1258 and on this channel we cover Splinterlands all day, every day. Get into it. Okay, so. Mana Busan said, It's amazing to see the rewards you get each day. Cards increasing your power slowly but surely. I've, I've played for now close to two months and it's been so incredibly fun and i've seen the value of the money i put into the game amount to something looking forward to more of your videos and to continue my own journey nice man keep it up thanks good luck um i'd say you know be patient too you know uh this is something that doesn't happen overnight even if you've seen significant gains let's say you put in 300 dollars and it turns to a thousand that's awesome but understand that there are good days and there are bad days and there are going to be good seasons where you, you, you pick certain cards before they blow up and you really get financial gain out of that. But then there's going to be other seasons where the cards you're receiving from your daily rewards or your season rewards, or maybe even the ones you're just choosing to invest in perhaps don't blow up in the same way. And you have to stay patient through that because every asset you receive in this game, it, all the cards you receive are deflationary in nature and, and they will rise in value with time. Um, but it could be years. And if you have that, if you play that long game, I think you're going to be happy with where you end up. Um, but don't be, try not to fight the impatience, fight the eagerness to see it immediately. I'm really glad you're beginning to see it, but I just want to just leave that kernel of encouragement that there will be times where you're not seeing those gains. And, uh, you know, are you going to keep playing it at that time? I would say that you should. And you're going to find that in years to come, when the next bull market comes, you will have accumulated a bag of, you know, these assets, these cards, probably SPS, DC, and you're just going to be, you're going to be really impressed by what that turns into when the time comes. But again, it's not overnight. Okay. Thanks, Mana. And Mana, a little SPS. Not from that account. Oh. transfer ever since i got my um title no it's not capital a ever since i got my title or buying a thousand packs with uh, marcus wall uh, i'm and since i got those packs i'm getting a bunch more airdrop points and a, and you know probably 30 more sps per day which is awesome so i'm getting 384 i was getting 350 roughly so that's you know 34 more that i'm getting daily claim that Back to the questions. Um, it's great to uh, it's great to get so much great information for, from the team. Thanks, Lama and Dwayne. Appreciate you, uh, Cyber Giga Factory. I do think so. Um, Taylor Jones says, "Hey, Dwayne. I know we st we still have two to three weeks to go, but I'd love to hear more about your strategy regarding the December eighth release and the and, and the second round of voucher drops." I failed to load up on SPS last time, but think it will make sen more sense to with the value doubling and being able to immediately open packs and the first ones. Mm, that's interesting, and the and be the first ones to sell on the market. Yep, these are this is a good topic, Taylor. Um, let me finish reading the question here. This also makes me think it may not be too hard of an idea to scoop up these Chaos Legion packs for seventy eight dollars if I can open them and sell the cards at an elevated price. Interesting. Okay, what do I think? Okay, so there's 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 a few different kind of tangents within the, within that big comment, right? Um, let's take it one by one. So we have two three weeks. Sure, it's it's always good to be thinking about it in advance, right? You want to have your plan. You want to know what you're thinking and have a prep a plan so that you're not just reacting. You want to be proactive. So good. He said, "I'd love to hear more." Okay, yeah, December eighth coming up fast. So on the second round of voucher drops, he's, you know, we're going to get twice as many vouchers. You, maybe not everybody knows that. That's the first point he's making. He's saying, 
on December 8th, when they, when they, when they release the packs and we can actually open them, they're also going to start releasing two vouchers for every one that they were releasing during presale. Double the vouchers. Now, again, you still have to have SPS air staked before you get any of that. You still have to have SPS stake before you get that. But let's say uh, you were getting one a day. Now you're going to be getting two a day. And so how to play that? He, he does say that that would the value doubling. I'm, I'm not I, that that phrase. I'm not sure I agree with because remember, you know, when you double the number of when you double the number of uh, vouchers that are being released, it's not actually doubling the value. It's doubling the number of vouchers. And, and, and I don't believe that the vouchers will stay the same price. That's so I don't, I don't think I agree with the idea that it will be doubling the value. It will be, but then his, his point that he says here next, um, the fact that we can open the packs immediately, that's an interesting counterpoint to what I just said, because, and I have to weigh that right now, like, you know, okay, so you're getting twice as many vouchers. So theoretically they should be worth half as much as what they used to be theoretically. But then the car, the packs are openable, which give, which satisfies people's you know desire to really have immediate gratification, and so there, there there's a whole buying there's a community of people that will buy them, buy the vouchers more excitedly during second month than they would have during first month, just simply because they can open the pack immediately. There's the, that immediate gratification is is going to be a factor, and he's kind of pointing to that. So that's true. You have to give some weight to that, and that that could drive the value of the vouchers maybe higher. On one hand, that's a, that's one positive factor for the, the the second month vouchers being worth more, not more than the first month, but just more than I originally thought. So this is a factor I hadn't thought about. Great, but then I want to come back to uh, the idea that there are double of them, and I want to weigh that a little bit more. And remember, there are other factors, fundamental considerations that you can look at with the vouchers during first month versus second month. Like what? The first month, the vouchers are going to give you Doctor Blight. A second unknown airdrop, which will probably be legendary. That's a guess, but I'm saying they usually front load the really great cards, all the legendaries, uh, because toward the end, like the last couple airdrops, they can drop like an epic on you. And and you know, frankly, you know, they've already sold all the packs, so they don't. They, they want to front load the real excitement. I think that's what happened with Untamed. So, pre-sale vouchers are giving the the user. Dr. Blights, a second card, which is probably legendary, and and titles, like the Legionnaire title, and what else? Potentially the opportunity to actually create your own legendary summoner. Not for you or me who are buying like 100 packs or 1,000 packs, but remember that there's an audience of people buying these vouchers specifically to rate to win that top six uh, Chaos Legion pack purchase race, right? Why are they doing that? Because they want to be the designer of their own legendary summoner. Those four influences are making the first series of voucher release during the first the, during the actual presale more valuable, more expensive than the second month. Those are the those are the considerations that you need to say. Okay, that's why we were paying twenty bucks a voucher during month one, and you have to then weigh it against his second point, which is the the idea that. Um, you can immediately open them. And that, like I said, that, that is going to scratch an itch that I hadn't previously thought about. And I love that you pointed that out, Taylor. Thank you. I still don't think that's going to make them more expensive than the first month. I wonder what you guys think, because immediate gratification, gratification is a huge consideration now that I've, he's kind of pointed it because people are, people love being able to open packs. It's, you know, it's literally like a, a scratch is a gambling itch in this, right? You, it's like the same reason you, you check your social media to see if you got it like thumbs up on something because we want that little, that little dopamine fix of, of opening it. It's like you go to YouTube and you watch, there's a, there's probably a 10,000 videos of kids opening gifts and other kids will just sit there and watch it for hours. If you have children, you know this. And we are the same thing with our social media. And this is the same thing when you open packs. And so that's a really, really powerful point. But I still stand by the fact that the second month uh, vouchers will be less expensive than the first month vouchers. Now, how much less? I've previously said they'll be about half. 
And if you if you assume that the average value for the first month was $20, then maybe the average value for the second month will be $10. I'm willing to say it could maybe be, you know, 12 or 13. I have a hard time believing it would be 15 or more. I have a hard time believing it would be five or less. You see the range I'm kind of saying for you? That's that's where I feel that they'll be between say seven and 13. That's my prediction. Um, and and I'm predicting that because of all those reasons, that give and take of those considerations that he, he raised and I raised. And he had one more thing here. What did he say? Uh, oh, and then the fact that you can be the first one to put the cards on the market, that's a huge consideration also. And I've been thinking about that because of I've been watching Splinterlands HQ, that's gank. Um, I really like their conversations, guys. I know I keep mentioning him, but there are, there are certain Splinterlands people that I love to listen to, and he is one of them. I actually don't know his friend's name. Um, apologies, but I really like the give and take that they provide, um, both of them. And I think they, they, they've had some insight on this idea that, look, once you open these packs... You'll be the first opening. There's only a million packs. Like not even a million packs are going to be sold during the first month, right? Let's pop over there quick. Over here, over to shop. And look, KS Legion window, right? We got one day and 10 hours left. Now, how many have we sold? Hard auctions is number two. That's great. Kush, you're still hanging in there, buddy. You're doing great. I really, really hope you get one, pal. It looks like you're in smooth smelling, but keep your eye on it, buddy. Keep, keep your eye on it. Um, and, uh, look, we've sold 723, we've given away a hundred, so that's roughly 815 or so thousand. There's, there's theoretically 200,000 more vouchers out there, roughly. No, it's more than that because the bonus packs don't take a voucher. So there's almost a quarter million, there's over a quarter million vouchers out there that could be used in the last day here. Could be. I don't think they will be now. I think, you know, a good chunk probably 50,000 more will or or maybe 100,000 more will find their way into the system here before the end of the pre-sale but we obviously won't have a million sold so um so what does that mean let's say let's say for just round numbers a million exactly sell they won't but let's say there is that's the only million chaos legion packs that are currently in circulation and we and people like me could theoretically open them on day 1 on December 8th Christmas come early, right? Well, and then what would happen? There's going to be some amazing cards in there. You guys are going to be so excited to see the videos of those unlo unboxing. And one more plug for Splinterlands HQ. Gank said he wants to open a bunch of his cards on December 8th. I think he said a thousand packs. So if you want to see a bunch of opening, you go check out his channel on December 8th. He's going to open a thousand, I think. I might be wrong about that, but he, I, I believe he said that. And, 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 and then bringing it back to the question, what, what does that mean? Well, Look, he's asking that those are going to have a high value because there's only a fraction of the total Chaos Legion cards that will ever be available are going to be open that day, right? There'll be like less than 1 million packs, probably 100,000 packs will be opened and the others will just be sat on. So there's going to be this small supply, very small supply of these exciting new cards that you guys are going to be eager to buy, which is going to, to his point, to the questioner, to Taylor's point, is going to drive values on those cards, Right there's a low supply and then a huge excitement that is going to drive the value on those cards. And that's why I've said to you guys repeatedly, just, you know, be watching the market on day one, but understand that when you're buying cards, it's very easy to get carried away with the excitement. And that, that when the supply is really low, it's very likely those prices are, will be, um, will be much higher than ultimately they will, they will land at. So it's like, on day one, they might spike to crazy, especially certain really exciting cards. Some cards that you that you that are obviously meta will just boom right up, and then they'll probably just trickle down until they find a floor, and the floor will be the price that, on average, people are willing to buy it at. That's just cryptocurrency generally. That's any market, right? That's how things work. Um, and uh, other cards that will be less exciting for some reason. Maybe you don't really, it's harder to see the value or how they might synergize with other cards. These cards won't do that immediate boom. They'll be, people will think they're boring. There, there, there will be, think of it this way. Of the new cards, some of them will be, you know, slept on. There, that's always the case, always. And that's why when you come into the marketplace and you look at reward cards, what do we see? We see the same six cards in the basement, right? Venari Heatsmith, Pelicor Deceiver, Gargoyle Lion, Pelicor Bandit, Conjurer, and Mercenary. People want to say, well, no, no, that's because they're being printed now. That's part of it, sure. 
But the other part is that because people don't really understand that these are huge investments that will one day be out of print. And when they are, their values will go up. If people understood that, like really meaningfully understood that they would be investing in these more cards like this card, which are definitely, definitely, definitely water uh, meta defining. Like this is a card that is meta defining because of because sneak attack is a very powerful play because this is a very powerful sneak attack monster because it fits so well in the future of what we understand blue to be with that new dwarf summoner, which is almost certainly a, a, a melee focus. And actually on that point, side note, I saw if you watch the Splinterlands Twitter feed, you, you, they actually they actually po they they commented on the dwarf blue summoner and the red um, summoner and they hinted now they could be trolling us or just like, you know, trying to surprise us. But they again hinted that they're going to switch roles and it'll be blue will be magic or um, blue will be melee and red. They absolutely uh, implied that. Now, they didn't go and exactly say for sure. So they could just be, you know, there could be some sort of trick there, some just to like play with the community because everyone's saying that now, right? I was saying that a long time ago, but everyone's saying it now. And so, again, this card is way, 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 way more powerful than the price implies. And the same is going to be true of some of these new Chaos Legion cards that pop out. So you do need to come in here on day one and look at what's available and then be reasonable and prudent with your money because some are going to seem too exciting and and, the, and, you, and you're going to want like, oh, I need to have that. If you're thinking that, kind of take a breath and say, okay, compare it to some other cards in the marketplace and you know try to figure out whether it's a good value and a good price. Two different things, right? Um, and some cards are good value and a good price and some cards are just... Um, um, some cards are just a good value. Like they, they have like good, really good utility, but their price doesn't maybe, they're, they can be overpriced still, even if they have a good value. You know what I mean? It's value is what you're getting, price is what you're paying. Um, there's lots of great cards that cost too much. You need to be careful. You're not buying those ones. And we'll do videos on that separately when the December 8th comes out. So he's asking like, you know, if I util if I sell the packs and I and I leverage those higher market prices, can't I just like uh, might not be a bad idea to scoop up these Chaos Legion packs at seventy eight dollars and then open them and sell the cards at the elevated prices um, compared to the once the general sale opens up? It's an interesting theory, but it is a gamble. So Taylor, here's the here's the final thought on this. He's saying, look. I think I've fully unpacked the considerations of his full comment and it's a great comment and I wish you left your in-game name buddy but it comes down to this does it make financial sense to buy Chaos Legion packs off of the Hive Engine for six seven bucks whatever they whatever they're going for I think they're going for eight bucks now Chaos Legion booster pack eight bucks even buy it for eight bucks open it sell the cards repeat Maybe, right? You could just repeat. It's a strong maybe. But these are, but you have to think two things. The, every pack is a lottery ticket. It's only promising you one rare, one rare card and four commons. If that's what you're unpacking, one rare and four commons, no gold, no legendary, no epics, that, that pack is going to be probably very inexpensive. Even if you get it on day one. Even if you're the first to list, you're probably not going to extract your $8 value. Probably. But some of the packs you open are going to have legendary cards and epic cards and gold foils and gold foil epics or gold foil legendaries. Those packs, of course, they're going to pay you way more than $8. Like for sure. Here's the problem. Which ones are going to include those? You don't know. It's a lottery ticket. So if you have 80 bucks, I would say... Buy cards, go on the marketplace and find cards that you need to help your deck to grow your account in the most direct and immediate fashion. On the other hand, if you have $800 or $8,000 that you're excited to put into Splinterlands, um, then I would that seems like a really strong argument that you're making for all the reasons we already explained. Be, why do I say it needs, why am I saying you need to put more money to make it a strong argument? Because these packs are a lottery ticket 
But when you start unpacking a thousand of them, the numbers, the, the, the mathematics around your likelihood to receive legendaries or gold foils becomes dramatically higher. Because if you get a 2% chance to drop a legendary, um, if you open one pack, that's a really small chance. If you open a thousand packs, you, you, you can start to trust the math that you're actually going to get a good distribution of really great cards and, of course, just inexpensive cards. So that's my view. If you were coming at it with like $8,000 and you were excited to buy packs, that's fun. Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. That could be really potentially really profitable. And your points around, your thinking around taking advantage of the low supply is, of course, very thoughtful and accurate, I think. But it's got to be done well. It's got to be actually executed quickly. It's got to be, you've got to, you have to believe in your ability to price them accurately, to extract the most value, but not be stuck holding them, right? Because you want them to go quick, but you don't want to um, tank the price by by undershooting your own value. That's a complicated process. Not everybody could do it, but I think based on the thoughtfulness of your comment, you probably could execute something like that. Good for you, Taylor. Great question. Leave your, leave your in-game name next time. Nice skill you got, Dwayne. What's that? Not sure what you mean, my brother. But that was the interview between me, Chatter, and uh, and Crypto Llama. Thanks, pal. Great conversation, he says, between me and Leopold. You got a, f a new follower. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Dwayne, for the gift. You are so kind. Oh, yeah. Crypto Ace got one of the gifts at um, the 5K celebration. Uh, appreciate you, man. Um, and uh, Leopold is, was a great guy i'm glad i met, sat down with you if you're watching this leopold i uh, really enjoyed that conversation i hope we could do it again sometime i think he has some you know valuable insight into this game and he's over there on twitch doing it like regularly so if you guys are on twitch go check him out uh yeah really enjoyed that one jackal jackal has become a really great supporter of the channel thank you jackal he's always in here every day just you know leaving comments that are very thoughtful and uh, encouraging i appreciate that sincerely he says the cup of joe and dressing gown is such a winning combination why not push a sprinkle splinterlands banter on top of it <laughs> this is a laid back banter session from a newly crowned legionnaire yep legionnaire mm. i got the thousand pack so i got the legionnaire title 1258 is a long-term player that will teach you that if you if you invest your time and attention into splinterlands you will reap rewards i think of it i think of splinterlands like a like uh my let's look at this for a second here guys my new artwork this is something i'm really proud of uh this i i commissioned this through uh, a splinter line actually one of the tna guys now um king arminius he's one of ours now and see everything about this is thoughtfully prepared and the artist is you know a, a professional through and through but i want to point out that when he brought this to me i you know i thought okay this is you know this golden wheat what does that what does that indicate i mean it indicates it's like the ceremonial um crown that you put on like a marathon winner when he wins it's uh, it also signifies uh like the food and farming and and the harvest so and there's biblical references in the there's the bible talks about like you know you reap what you like you somebody sows and you come back later and you reap and it's like this idea that there's effort that put that's put in it on day one and days later at some point in the, in the future there's an opportunity to extract value there I, I this i'm this is so chock full of imagery that it's wonderful and it just reminds me of what ja what jackal just said there which is exactly my my point with this game time and attention invested today is worth something and it might take time to realize that value but if you are investing it regularly in a game like the splinter lands um you're going to see that 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 account is going to continue to grow with with your time and attention i love it thank you jackal thank you king arminius Crypto Llama, can I get access to those analytics? That's funny. In the video, we talked with Chatter about how um, I can't remember what the analytics were, but there was Chatter had some sort of data that he that he didn't want he didn't want to share with me and uh, Llama, and uh, and so Play to Earn Gaming is saying like, let's get it. Come on, share it, share, it. give give us the details. Thanks for commenting, Llama. I see you too. Crypto Llama, here it is. He says. Uh, might have might have to make you guys legendary card frames as per the comments next time. That's right. Next time. In the video, he gave us 
he gave us card frames and like around our picture because that editing was done by crypto llama crypto llama and i are trying to do more and more regular content together i love that guy he's got also there's just so many amazing people like in this video in this short video alone we've talked about i think three different splinterlands people and i feel strongly that there are great content creators out there and um you know they're offering something maybe that's uh complementary to what i'm offering and so um l i love to see you guys supporting them also thanks guys armin tatoro armin tatoro whenever my coffee doesn't doesn't kicks in and i'm so lazy to play the game i just watch one of your videos and instantly i'm hype again <laughs> nice that's awesome i'm glad Nathan Johnson, Turk here. Hey Turk. Going with your train of thought here, that's how I felt about the new reward cards. My mark my words, we will hit two million plus active users at at a point. We will and we will be saying, I can't believe uh, X was only like blank card was only fifteen cents when it came out, especially when they dropped the power requirements for the modern format, like Agro had hinted at in the AMA. Yep, even at eight million print. Even at an 8 million print on the common with 400,000 active users, that's 20 cards per account. You guys hear that? I hope you're paying attention. Turok is exactly right. Because in that conversation with Leopold, Leopold asked, are we, are we getting to a place where this game is going to be unaffordable to new players? Because, you know, the, the cards keep going up and up and up. And I said, look, these cards are going to keep going up and up and up. But there's going to be new cards that are always going to have extra value. They're going to add new value to the game and they're going to be coming in at lower and lower prices. Plus, currently, there are some cards in the marketplace that I pointed out earlier that are super inexpensive and that are going to add utility as well as power. And they're going to, you know, options that are going to help you win and gain more rewards for your time and attention. So, you know, people are sleeping on certain cards, but we're going to go back and we're going to we're going to we're not only going to it's the people who say things like, isn't it good? Is it is it too expensive now? are actually thinking in their heart, they're maybe not saying it, but they're thinking, I missed it. I missed it. Like the opportunity with Splinterlands was three years ago when I could have got them for a penny. Now it's all blown up and it's over. You know, maybe I can get a little bit of a few weeks of benefit out of this thing, but this train is going to derail and that's that. That's that's where the comment kind of comes from. I'm not, I'm not saying Leopold was thinking that. Leopold was actually asking the question, voicing the question on behalf of his community, people that raise that question regularly to him, and they raise it to me regularly. Here's the thing. That vision doesn't understand what I'm talking about when I say time and attention, when I talk about snowballing rewards, when I talk about retroactive um like a retroactive raise to your to your account so you invest your time and attention over the course of months or week uh, over months or years and you're going to see an accumulation of assets that are inexpensive generally speaking 20 cents 15 cents 30 cents who cares right it's only maybe three bucks a week who cares but here's the thing in three years when those cards are no longer available and when and, and and people have begun to unpack the utility of them and when they're no longer getting them for, for free as airdrops or not airdrops i mean um daily and season re rewards what happens the price inevitably goes up these are deflationary in nature guys and deflationary assets mean that the, the supply is either stable or almost stable or in this case reducing while the supply while the demand is increasing that's a recipe for price appreciation and so there will be cards that are out right now that are 15 cents that are going to be 15 dollars in the future that's almost a guarantee now in the future might mean three years are you willing to be patient and enjoy a game that's giving you trivial quote-unquote trivial rewards um and be patient for that retroactive pay increase because in three years time if it goes from 15 cents and you've accumulated a hundred of them it, it's only 15 cents times 100 15 bucks at first no big deal maybe you say but when it goes to 15 dollars per card it's a totally different equation that's that the 1500 from 15 bucks to 1500 that's happened to me and that will happen to others some people who understand that right now are doubling down by playing this game and, and, and stacking the rewards and holding on to them. Others who don't get that 
are in here selling these cards for 15 cents. A market requires a buyer and a seller. Somebody right now, and I don't mean to hate on Avatar of Weed, but he he thinks this 50 he'd rather have 15 cents than this card. I don't get that. Avatar of Weed, if you're watching this video, help me understand where you're where you're at on that. Do you need that value? Is it is it more important that you have the 15 cents for some reason? Like I I just literally can't I can't wrap my mind around that. This is you give you're giving that card away. You're giving it away. Okay. Good. It's already been sold. What about these guys? Can I buy some of these? See, what are we at? 16 cents? Yes, please. Already been sold. I, I, this is new. I didn't know they did this. It's already been sold. I like that they've done that. So, so I better bring it back to the question before I forget. Yeah, Turek's point is the price the price of these cards are going to go up dramatically and you're going to be surprised. And it, and the power requirement comment is important to remember too. The, the modern league is going to have a wholly different power structure. And that means that there are going to certain cards that are currently really low power like the current reward cards that perhaps don't move the needle in in the modern in the current rank battle in terms of moving you from like let's say silver 1 to silver 2. Maybe these these collection powers for these cards don't move the needle to get you out of silver one into gold three but they the as the power structure changes into the modern format the five collection power for a common reward card is going to be more significant for that league than it is currently in this league okay so he's right on all accounts uh and if you think like him you're going to have a long-term vision for this and you're going to do quite well in years to come question how are we doing we're at 31 minutes hmm okay Marcio says, amazing guys, really like this format. Lots of great information. Maybe you should stream weekly with a different guest, maybe live, haha. Could be top players of leaderboards, could be the top player of the leaderboards, tournaments, streamers, all sorts of different people. Totally agree, totally agree. Same comment on Llamas. Yes, Marcio, I completely agree. And me and Llama are working together. We are gonna continue to pr provide quality content for the community and uh continue to grow that plus i look forward to i'm going to be sitting down with with luke plays to earn again soon uh he owes me a video because i he rolled my name in uh in his 2500 no was it his birthday giveaway his birthday celebration um so i'm excited for that he's not actually he, we're just doing it for fun it's not because of that he gave it away to somebody else but uh yeah i'm excited to sit down with luke also and other people too uh, some of the YGG guys, um, we're trying to set up another one and tons of great people. Let's keep, let's keep the conversation going. Plus Splinterlands has put forward a request for streamers and I intend to throw my name in the hat and be a, hopefully a helpful contributor to the Splinterlands ecosystem. I, I hope I'm, they already think of me in that manner. Like think of me as adding value to their community. I think of it as my community, um, our community, um, but uh, yeah, I would love to, you know, create, strike up a, an improved and more direct, um, what's the word? Partnership. That's right. Partnership with Splinter Eyes directly. And Ron, if you're listening, let's talk. Okay. Marlon's Sawazu with the 10 mana cost. And, uh, and all of those skills, you and Chatter should have been legendary tanks just instead. That's funny. Yeah, we definitely should have. I told I told Llama something like that. I was like, I, I complained about the abilities I had, and I said something like, uh, "Why don't I have two plus speed?" Because my guy, because I'm all about speed meta. Cyberblock said, "People who don't join the Discord are missing a huge part of the game. The community aspect alone adds so much to that experience." I completely agree, Cyberblock. I completely agree. We have about five or 600 people in the discord. 
Um, and we just try and hang out like every day I'm in there. I can't spend as much time as I want to, but the, but, but the TNA community members, that means members, that means interns, uh, and the community generally are there talking and helping one another. They, there's splinter. If you have splinter talk posts, you can post them and I'll go through and read some and I'll give some upvotes with my SPT. You can uh, ask questions to a broader community that are looking to help and add value to your day. You can, um, potentially join TNA through an internship by either supporting the discord or, um, there's going to be other ways. I don't, I can't talk about the other way yet. There, there currently are three ways to become an intern. One is to support this channel at silver or better. Two is to boost our discord. Um, three is to win one of our tournaments. There's going to be four. There's going to be other ways that are either inexpensive or free. Um, but I can't leak those yet. So if you want to be TNA intern, stay focused. I had a question today saying something like, if I become a member to your channel, to your YouTube channel, and then I just, and you make me an intern, can I just cancel the membership? And then you'll like, will you kick me? And I, and I just wanted, it just makes me shake my head. Like, what do you, so here's the thing, guys, if you don't want to support this channel, please don't support the channel. Like, I, I hope I'm, I, 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 I think I've been crystal clear on that fact. I'm supporting, I, I, I put out two or three videos a day, every day. Um, maybe with the exception of Sundays. And I, I've said repeatedly, I don't, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to support this channel. I do really, really appreciate every one of my members. And I think I'm adding extra value to their day also with certain extra privileges that they're unlocking. But the fact that um, I make my Silver Plus members an intern in our guild, in my guild, is is a thank you for their support and in a way to add value. If you don't want to be a supporter of this channel, please don't don't support the channel. Don't try and support the channel just to kind of sneak your way in. That's not that's not going to be a good start for our relationship, right? You want to be part of the, the you want to be part of the guild. We better start off on the right foot, and that's going to be honesty. Like if you don't want to be a supporter of the channel. That's fine. Hear me. That's fine. There are other ways to become a TNA intern, like I just listed. And some of them are less expensive. But here's the thing. I think I'm adding more value to, to my members than just that. So if you want to be a member, great. Please do. But don't sign up to be a member just to then later leave because you just wanted to sneak into the internship. Like, come on, guys. Like, let's... It, I really want you to understand that there are many ways for you to support this channel. And one of them is through Discord and adding value in that community and we can select people for internship at various times for various reasons so if that's on your heart um let's try and move forward in a way that's both good for you and good for the channel not you know um uh, trying to you know i don't know i hope that's clear that kind of that, that, that comment made me a little bit sad honestly because it's like it kind of sound, it made me feel like you thought i was trying to I don't know, either rip you off or that maybe you were trying to sneak your way into the system. And I'm thinking if you want to be an intern, I've, I give you three different ways and, and there are various prices like the intern tournaments happen every week. I want people to want to be part of the community. I want people who are members to want to be members. And if you don't want to be a member, then, you know, please, please just, you don't have to be. Um, okay. So that's all I'll say about that. And it wasn't Cyberblock that said that. It was a different comment earlier. Okay. Armin Tataro, where's the... I think he's talking about an intro. He want... I'm pretty sure Armin's the one who keeps asking me to do an intro. Like he wants me to do like a little video splice to like add to the front. Um, I mean, we'll get to it when we get to it. Solomon the second. Will they fix the website graphics? What do you mean by that? The graphics on Splinterlands? I mean, I think they're fine. So you, everybody, I guess, has a different idea about what graphics would be awesome to enjoy at a game. I, I find, for me, these the graphics that are available in Splinterlands are... I don't... I don't. I mean, I still play Super Nintendo sometimes. I play... You know, I, for me, these are... It looks great. So I guess to each their own. But they... I guess to more fully answer that question, they did say that they plan to expand the graphical appearance of the game with time i'll load up a see that i'm i haven't started my daily quest so let's 
do one quick. I'm in diamond now as of this morning. So no magic. Noxious fumes. Don't want heavy hit points. I sold my Almo Cambio because I just needed to prepare for for um I was trying to prepare for my Chaos Legion's pre-sale pack purchase. I don't regret it, but you know, it's an excellent card and, and I miss it. So it's like, I'm glad I sold it, but it's an excellent card. That'll be missed. What's the five points? I'm gonna try this. Might be a mistake. We'll see. Okay, we'll try and we'll watch this one battle and we'll get back to the questions. I just want, I'm ho I was hoping to win my first on the on the season reward. I can grab another comment while I'm at it. Razor Games. How about some kind of magic resist or fire monsters or magic reflect, but only for monsters with with void armor. It's fun to speculate. Oh, and I'm confident on water melee. Yeah, me too, man. Glad I grabbed like 20 Pelicor Bandits for 18 cents. One thing is for sure, the art of the cards just keeps getting better and better. I agree. They, they, stylist, the artists are very, very talented. And I continue to be impressed by the art style and the evolution of the art style and even the card style. Because when you go back to like Alpha, they all have a little bit kind of the border is a bit too big for my opinion. Look at the fire border. The looks like water border. Looks like kind of a leafy green border. It's interesting, but it took away from the size of the uh, the monster art, which ultimately I really want more of. So I think there was a evolution into beta where it was more clean and 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 uniform, like blue, white, uh, or blue, neutral, white, black. They're all that uniform. So they've been evolving as time goes on, and. I think they're coming into it now. And ever since the cracked border, I think we're, we're starting to see like a new quality level. So, yeah, I'm excited for the art. Okay. Um, one thing is for sure, the art, yeah. So, speculation on the magic resist for fire monsters. I feel like it would have to be specific to the summoner at hand. Like you could have a summoner that offered void. You could have a summoner that offers magic reflect. But just a blanket buff to all fire would be too overpowered, especially if it wasn't dependent on the summoner, because then you would have that would make them uniquely powerful and in that they're resistant to, to magic. Unless you said, you know, every one of them has a different buff, like maybe Maybe fire in the new meta, in the new game, always has, for instance, void. Maybe blue always has shield. Maybe, you know, you'd have to do something like that. But I, I, it'd be really hard to balance. And I think the whole premise of this game requires the summoner bring that benefit. That way you can control and manipulate what benefits you desire in certain contexts. So, but yeah, I like, I like what you're thinking. And, and I like imagining how they could get creative with that. You know, because what you're doing really is just thinking like, what well, you know, what if they did that? I think that probably wouldn't work, but still it's real. Like you said, it's really fun to think about it and, you know, think it through. Watch this battle and back to it. So this is exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, I want my dwarf to hit hard and I want him to die right away because I actually want him to get out of the way so that Magnar can come in and do his thing. So this is this is probably going to be ideal, actually. He's going to die on the thorns, but he's going to hit hard doing damage. First and second position. That's ex that's totally fine with me. Now we're going to hit even harder, which is great. And then we'll finish him off with... Uh, oh, no, we don't finish him off because Phineas Rage was a little too fast. Dang, I should have thought about that. I could have made it... I could have contrived a situation where Phineas Rage was my second tank, my third tank, I guess, was at the right amount of speed that he would have fired after my first two guys got out of the way, but I messed up there. 
Yeah, I'm dead. Because of the self heals. Yeah, I'm dead. Well, somehow he misses this. If he somehow miraculously missed that, I could have maybe conceivably won. Because of the poison. Oh, cancel. I'm not trying to do a grind video. Okay, let's do a few more comments. So if I buy 100 packs, the airdrop card still isn't a guarantee. It's a chance. Do I just get, just, just to get one? If you buy 100 packs, AC trash, tracks, I guess trash. If you buy 100 packs during the pre-sale, which you only have one more day to do so, you would get two um, guaranteed Dr. Blight because you bought 50, two, two, pa two 100 packs is dividable by 50 twice. And every 50 packs, you get one Dr. Blight. So you would for sure get two Dr. Blights plus each pack you bought. Well, if you buy 100 through this one, you that would be it. Um, if you bought 100, plus you would get 100, what are they called? CAAD, which is the token he's giving away, which would provide you partial ownership of the mathematically, uh, the 2% airdrop cards. If, if that's not clear, you need to go through and read the notes more clearly because I, that that's what I just said to you. And, and I guess what I said in that previous video is, I mean, <clears throat> That's it. It's like they're every 50 packs, you get one guaranteed. Plus there's a mathematical chance of 2% per pack, but that's, you need to, you need to think that through and read the notes more closely on that one. Good luck to everyone in the tourney. Oh, Margaret. Margaret, did you change the name back? Okay. Um, Margaret made it in, I think. Didn't you? Pretty sure you did. I'm just getting confused because I thought it was, I thought Margaret was Smoke Lord and maybe she is. Maybe she isn't. So you tell me, Margaret. Yeah, I think maybe I'm mistaken. I think I got confused there. Um, Kel TV would love to subscribe once uh, my GCash is fixed. Nice. I need to join your guild. Cool, man. Again, like I said earlier, don't feel pressured to... to are you doing it now? You are doing it. Publicly, no. Okay. Yeah, guys, just if you want to support the channel, it means a lot to me, but it's not mandatory and I'm going to continue creating content for the for the community, regardless of whether there's one sponsor or no zero sponsors or a million sponsors. Okay. Hey, Panda. How I wish to have a deck to join TNA 2 or 3. David Pung. Keep going and you will one day, man. You will. You start to focus just on gains and privileged things. This I miss the old Dwayne channel in person. But hey, I get that's how world spins bigger, gets bigger, and ends small, gets eaten. Unfortunately, that's real life. I read this comment the other day from Alin, and I was like, I was a bit surprised, honestly, because he seems to be suggesting that I'm. I don't. I, I don't know what he's suggesting, but. It's clearly not like he's, he's disappointed with how I've changed. Um, I don't know what you mean by that, Alin, but um, I'll tell you that I, I really feel like I'm doing the exact same thing I was doing before. This video that you commented on was me trying to create an opportunity for people who are interested in being in guilds. So I think of, I think of my everything I do on this channel as, as my attempt to offer value to the Splinterlands community and two, to create situations and educational content that are going to help you guys unlock more rewards for your time and attention. If that sounds valuable to you, then you should subscribe and stick around. If it doesn't, then maybe you shouldn't. And I mean, I, I think I, I think I do a lot to try and add value, like even giving away things, right? Like I gave away, I think it was about $600 worth of assets the other day. Um, and then separately, like a hundred dollars worth of, um, lava launchers in a different video. So I don't know. I'm sorry you feel that way, I guess. Thyro Grimm says something is wrong with the daily quest reward. I only got one loot chest while playing on silver. That's weird. There are two days now. Did someone experience the same? And Adam said, if your card power wasn't 50, Ooh, 15,000 power. Yes. That's probably what happened. 
makes things and So Adam's point is that you you probably let your your collection power fall below the level required to earn the silver level reward, which is certainly possible. Cyro, I would check that out if I were you. Bree and Dave, hard to see the cool artwork that's covered by your cam, but totally dig the interpretations. Keep keep up the awesome info. or we'll keep watching it. Is it just covered up? They're both the same, except for this one's got the dark black. This is another version of it where I just added, I added the joint TNA. And more recently, you just see the only difference here is, look at this. The difference here is that the time was 11, 11, which was thoughtfully chosen by the artist because of, um, um, some, I don't know how to describe it, like a, like a spiritual suggestion. Like I guess 1111 speaks to like, um, some sort of faith or something. I don't fully understand. I, I don't, I don't fully know that I've like from a, I come from a Baptist Christian background and I don't, uh, I I've never heard that before, but I'm relatively, I wasn't born in the, I wasn't raised in the church. So Maybe it's just imagery that I'm, I wasn't familiar with, but he thoughtfully selected that time. Later, though, we ended up changing it to uh, one sixteen, which is a biblical reference for Romans, and that's something that's a that's a uh, some scripture that's important to me. And uh, in that scripture, actually, Romans one says that I will not be ashamed of the gospel, kind of thing. It says. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to Jew first and also to the Greek. This idea that I'm not ashamed of the gospel in Christian context means that I'm not I, I'm not ashamed to share my faith in Jesus Christ as a savior, as a king, and that I, you know to publicly admit that I, I come under Him as my authority and as my um, I'm a disciple of Jesus. That's what I say. I'm a follower of Jesus, um, and. So that's on the one level, that's, that's what that means. But then on a second level, it's about pride and like, um, satisfaction in TNA because one, one, six, like I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'm proud of like what we're creating, what we're doing. And, uh, I hope you guys are too. And if you are, then come join the discord, hang out, maybe one day become a member. Let's see. Giga factory, great artwork, very compelling. Crypto Dad says, great content as always. Michael J. Mandlig says, I actually think water melee can work. I saw Old Man QT's video on it. Tried it out with Kitty and, uh, and Verislacia. Yep, I agree. It's a very viable, very viable approach with water. Hola, Duane. I am sorry I missed your live stream. Sadly, I was too early for, it was too early for me here. I look forward to your future live streams and hope that they may be, uh, may be at a more normal time for me but I completely understand that you can't do it right away for everyone in their different time zones. In other news, is it possible that grinds on Saturday are more difficult? I, if I look back at my last weeks and months, my win-loss ratio is a bit worse on Saturdays. That said, I wish you a fabulous weekend. Cheers and, and cheers. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Think about it. There's Saturday people aren't working. They're probably more inclined to do their play the game. And you're sort of getting more and more live active players being thoughtfully attentive to the game as opposed to maybe just quickly doing what I did earlier, throwing up a game, throwing down a, a, a team and maybe kind of half-heartedly. Um, yeah, maybe. Also, I find that it's more d busy during the beginning of the season. And so you might find that you're having more challenges at winning at the beginning of a season or at the end. Beginning because... All of the best players got demoted to lower and lower ranks, and then they're in your they're in your way, and you're fighting against some of the best decks in the game. At the end of the season, it's harder because everyone is trying tooth and nail to get like one more rank point to get squeeze out the, all the best season rewards. Simba Boy Blue said, "I'm just waiting and stocking up on DC DC until Phase Two, December eighth. Definitely hitting Phase Two pre-sale mark." And living on the East Coast sucks. I missed the giveaway. Oh, well, 
Gotta do good in turning now. Keep up the content. Love community. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Let's do five more. Let's get let's just scroll down and get rob a big one. Crypto Dad says, Hey Dwayne, I'm still not Phil. I'm we I'm not Phil. I'm still I'm not Phil. Okay. I'm I've been with you for around three months like that. Anyway, the one great card. Thank you for amazing. It's very fun and interesting and learned a lot. So I guess I had I, I thought Crypto Dad was one of my other followers. That goes by the name Phil. My bad. Sorry, Crypto Dad. I swear it was you, but I'm, you know, there's so many people, obviously. Okay. Let's try and get five comments. I see flow. 10 million figure was people logging into their accounts. People meaning, meaning people were signing in and checking their accounts more often than people usually do. Okay. So he's talking about in this context of the AMA, because, um, Hard point said that the tell me there were 10 million people that that uh, logged into their accounts on in last I think last week with this game and the previous week was seven million. I think IC is kind of saying it's are you I see are you saying that that's maybe not a meaningful statistic? I kind of think it is, even if they were just logging in to check their accounts, because that's um that's that's a you know almost a 40 probably a 40 percent increase in people being active with this thing whether they're just logging in to check or whether they're logging in to play or whether they're logging in to trade something or buy something but i think you're just saying you just wanted me to better understand what that 10 million was thanks buddy uh four more mike says i think you're right about the card being a melee focused water summon i don't think it will be plus one attack though you could throw a demented shark for an easy plus two might be a bit strong I see your point, but the same thing happens with fire. Um, the same thing happens with fire. Same thing happens with... You could, you, there's a, there's a dragon summoner that you, uh, that you can utilize with any splinter that gives you plus one melee. And then there, there are lots of splinters that have a plus one melee inspire monster so the 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 thing you're describing is actually quite plausible like for instance look at summoners plus one melee for red then there's there are monsters on the red team that are plus one melee there's actually one two three you could use so then you could be plus four melee then you also have Daria Dragon Skill, who's plus one melee. And again, with him, you can partner with any other splinter, meaning, you know, you can use any other monster that has Inspire. For example, with Fire, I'll just quickly show you Fire. Look at the monsters. So, oh, you know what? It'll be easier if I go here. Card. Splintercards.com. Go over here to Abilities. And we gotta look for inspire. Okay, I see it. Fire. And these are all the cards that you can play with currently that have inspire. Look at fire one, two. And then also there's a neutral monster, the enchanted pixie, for three. So with fire, you can do summoner plus one, Beetle Queen plus one, Phyrexia General plus one, Enchanted Pixie plus one for a plus four on on your on your melee. But that doesn't make a lot of sense because if you were to do that, who are you even buffing? You want to have mana left over and spots left over to receive the buff. And so that's probably not the most logical play, but definitely these two go really well with the plus one melee summoner. And then you start throwing in like Cobalt Miner or um, um, Serpentine Spy, Magnor, right? They're, they can, it can be very devastating. I particularly like um, Beetle Queen, especially with Magnor, because you get the tank heal and the Inspire. Such a nice combo. Only problem is the low hit points and she can kill herself with the Magic Reflect. So it could happen. It definitely could happen. But we'll see. I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if Splinterlands came out and surprised us somehow, because they made it sound like... I wish I could find it on the... Maybe I could quickly look. 
I can find the splinter lands. Let's see. I'm just going to quickly scroll down on splinter lands. If I could see, if I see the post where they show the two summoners, we can stop and read it and see, see here it is. Chaos Legion is going to change the meta up entirely. We got some new art drops today, but we're all dying to know what the stats of these new summoners will be. Will water still be magic powerhouse? We'll find out soon. I mean, there was more, I feel like there was another comment. There was more to it than that. Or maybe they changed the wording of it after the fact. Cause I swear when I first read it, I thought it was pretty much confirming. No, that was it. That was the one. So you tell me, does that imply? What do you, how do you read that? Are they saying here? They're not confirming anything here, but they're definitely implying it, right? Will water still be a magic powerhouse? He doesn't look like water. Everyone's saying she's melee, right? Everyone saying she's going to be and like think about dwarves are physically they physically attack you know think of all the dwarf imagery from all your favorite you know fantasy including lord of the rings gimli uh gloin um every like really they're always physically strong that's that's like dwarf lore and then this girl clearly looks like she's a magician with the with flaming hands I could be wrong, but that's what I'm expecting. What do you guys think? Okay. Oh, I guess and while I'm here, I created a... Um, I created a time and attention... The actual... Here it is. Time and attention. Uh, time and attention is the Twitter handle. I haven't been particularly active on it, but, you know, we'll get there. And it'll be just like me just sharing important little comments on on the updates from Splinterlands or from other community members. That'll be my main place where I do that kind of thing. I have a Twitter account also, but it's mostly just local political stuff. And I don't know how much that would interest this community. Okay. Um, I think I almost want to wrap it there. Let's see. How are we doing? We are over an hour. I know I, I want to start doing longer of these because it's been requested and why not? But this week is super bad. I'm gonna close. I'm super swamped. I've gotta go on a, a family vacation on Thursday, um, Thursday evening. I'm not back until Monday. So I, there will be content out, but it's gonna be much more, it's not gonna be shot here in this in, in my studio. It's gonna be shot on my phone. I'll, I'll show you some gameplay. I'll show you some just conversations, just briefer stuff where I have, if I have a little thought on something that pops up, um, but I'm taking time. Me and the kids are going to have some fun. Uh, and, uh, I happy Thanksgiving to all my American followers and guys, thanks for your time and attention. I hope if you've watched until the end, make sure that you like, and subscribe. Appreciate you guys. God bless.